All right. Um, so this is sets. It's a fun one. It's it's one of my favorites, to be quite honest. Uh, so what is a set? The set is the physical environment of the show, um, which is basically just anything that happens on the stage happens uh, inside the set because that's what the actors are performing inside of. Uh, scenery is the movable pieces of the set. So if you look at the set behind it, which I know might be a little bit difficult, like the windmill, that's not scenery. That's that's a structural part of the set that cannot be moved. But, and this is just a light thing, the big sign that says Moulin Rouge behind uh, in the middle, that gets moved out of the way. Therefore, that's a piece of scenery. It's not it's not a huge distinction because most of the time the set designer is designing both. Uh, but just be aware that there is that distinction and scenery crew and set crew might be different things um, th if you're in a really large theater company. So the set is meant to immerse the audience and the performers. Um, the audience looks at the set and goes, oh, I really feel like I'm there. The performers look at it and go, I feel like I'm there, which allows me to get better into my character. Uh, the big thing that's going to be highlighted throughout this entire process is theater construction is not normal construction. Uh, if you've passed construction crews with like jackhammers and you know big drills and they're like building with stone and stuff like we're, that's never going to happen. Um, theater has to be made uh, easily movable, easily break uh, breakable, but also structurally sound so that people can stand on it, walk on it, touch it, all that kind of thing. Um, essentially, theater construction is its own entire entirely different field than normal construction that just happened to share a name because of their similarity in the end. Uh, product. Okay, uh, so the people on the set crew, uh, they are the director, the set designer, the technical director, master carpenter and carpenters, uh, painters, riggers, and the sneak charge. So the director, as I'm sure all of you know, uh, is the person who is basically running the whole thing. Uh, in this case at Lowell, uh, Ms. B is our director. So she is mostly working with actors, but when uh, any of the designers, including set designer, prop designer, sound designer, lighting designer, any of them have uh, an idea, they have to run it by Miss B because Miss B has the vision and it all has to kind of fit into what Miss B wants the show to look like. Um, so while the director is not necessarily creating the set, the set does have to be approved by the director before construction can start uh, in order to make sure that, you know, ever, everything is cohesive. So the set designer, uh, which at Lowell is me, uh, is essentially in charge of drafting and creating what the set's going to look like. Not not necessarily overseeing the building and operation day to day of the set, but kind of the general layout of what the set's going to look like. Um, as we talked about in the last lecture, props can occasionally be set pieces. Uh, so for example, if we look over here, I would say this bed, uh, which this is a set for Into the Woods, um, and that would be Granny's bed. Uh, Granny's bed would in that case be uh, a prop, not a set piece. So the set designer would be working with the props designer to make sure that everything the props designer was doing for uh, set props were actually going to like go together with, with the set. Um, the technical director is the one who the set designer then goes to, shows uh, all of their drawings, and then the technical director goes, oh, uh, well, these three things aren't possible due to physics. And then the technical director kind of figures out how to actually implement the set designer's uh, designs. So then the set designer works with the technical director to actually create what the set's really going to look like uh, with the constraints of you know reality um, and budget. So the master carpenter and carpenters are the ones who are mainly working with lumber and construction. Uh, so the master carpenter is the one who gets directions directly from the set designer to build the things. Um, they are not designers. The master carpenter uh, just basically takes the set design and, and manages and delegates the building of it. Uh, and then the carpenters are all the people who are working on building it. When we do return to school, which might be next year, uh, and you will all have been in the club for a year, you're mostly going to be carpenters, although you could be split up into, into different departments as well uh, for when you do backstage work because we need a ton of carpenters to build big sets, which is what we do. And we would put all of our time into that uh, club wise. Uh, painters are essentially the people that paint all the things on the set, um, although it cannot necessarily just be paint. Uh, so paint, 
uh, as a department got kind of dissolved into props and set at this point. Um, but there used to be a paint department uh, that was one person who just did only painting everything. Uh, and that's super helpful. And if you know that you're a good painter, we'd love to have you do that as well. Um, essentially, you just paint everything on the set and make sure that it fits in with the set designer's vision. Uh, when the set designer is is designing the set, they will tell you what color that they want it to be. Uh, they want certain objects to be, but occasionally you will have to like pressure them into doing that because I know I've had issues where I'm like focusing on the like the physical kind of look of an object and I'm not really thinking about the exact color. And then I'm just like, I want this to be green. And then, and then Matilda, who was our paint department was like, okay, but you need to tell me what green. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you're aware that, that, that all of those kind of have to fit into the set design. Uh, riggers are the ones who hang stuff from the ceiling and make sure that everything is actually like in place on the set. Uh, in general, all of our set crew positions do this as well. Uh, because there's not there's not a clean divide between all of these at Lowell, but in in professional theaters, there's definitely going to be people that are doing each of these jobs and only those jobs. Um, for example, like I'm set designer and and a carpenter, and you know, I've I've painted as well, and I've done some rigging. Like you you basically end up doing a little bit of everything, um, but rigging you just set everything up on the set to make sure it's like structurally sound, you're hanging stuff from the ceiling, having it all go according to plan. The scenic charge is essentially the one who's in charge of making sure that all of the things that everyone's doing fit together. So if the painters have painted, uh, like for example, let's say, I will I will grab the little pointer. Um, if they've painted the, this, that color, like they've painted it that kind of browny, rusty green, and they've painted this bright blue, the scenic charge is the one who's gonna go, oh wait, that's wrong. You need to make sure that those two are, those two are kind of matching. Uh, scene charge is basically just in charge of making sure that everything in the scene is going according to plan. Okay. Uh, so moving on the stages of construction. The stages of construction are build, load in, run of show, and strike. So build is, as you would have would assume, uh, essentially everyone just builds all of the things that are going to go on the set. Uh, load in at Lowell is different than load in at professional theaters. Uh, so, for example, with the Hamilton set that I put in behind, Hamilton is a touring production, meaning that they have to take this all down after like the month or two that they're in a place, and then load it all into a truck and then load it in to the new theater. Uh, so that's what load in means in, in the professional context. At Lowell, it means that if we're building anything outside or if we built anything in, inside the theater that's not in the right place, we bring it into where it needs to be for the actual show. So that's essentially just setting it all up to make sure that it is in the correct position. Uh, run of show is during the run of the show. So over the course of uh, tech week, dress week, and uh, all performances is what we usually do at Lowell. Um, we need to make sure that, the, that all of the set pieces are intact, they're working properly, and everything's going well. If, for example, some person opens a door and it like breaks off its hinge, we have to fix that. Uh, so that's a run of show thing. The other thing is if someone during the show, uh, if the director is like, or I guess not during the show, during a tech rehearsal, the director's like, oh, that person needs to be standing on a, a box when they say this line. And we're like, we don't have a box. Um, then we need to go and build the box and put it under them so that they're ready to do that. Well, and that's kind of just run of show little things. What's not going to happen, and again, to use the Hamilton set, if what's never going to happen during run of show is they go, oh, we need this bit of balcony. Like we didn't have that, now we need it. You would have figured that out long ago during during build. You would not just suddenly come up with that during run of show. Uh, and then strike is taking it down. So with touring productions, that means taking it all uh, taking it all apart and then throwing it into the back of a truck to drive to the next city. Uh, for us, that means taking it all down and, and putting it back where it goes in the scene shop, in the lumber uh, like area and everything to make sure that we have it again for a future production. Uh, for set pieces, we'll be super clear uh, when you're doing strike, uh, what needs to be completely demolished, like broken up into pieces and stored, or if we should store it whole. Um, for example, we have some benches that uh, we've used in multiple shows. So you don't wanna take those up all, all the way apart to just be back to being lumber. We wanna keep them as benches, so stuff like that. Uh, and you'll, you'll get used to that. Strike is a funding that Tech Club gets to do a lot of as well. Uh, let me go back. So let's talk a little bit about set construction itself. Uh, so lumber is different than wood. 
Wood is a tree that has been freshly cut with no milling whatsoever. Lumber is wood that has been milled. So behind this, that's wood. Going back, that's lumber. Uh, we use lumber in the theater uh, unless we're using wood like intentionally for a prop. Uh, I have used wood in now two shows um, for props, but I have never once used wood for a set. Uh, make sure that that is like a, a really reason that you need to use wood other than lumber. Um, and if you're ever in the position where you're buying, uh, like, uh, where you're buying set construction materials, uh, make sure you're buying lumber, not wood. Uh, that is a mistake you can make. We have not made it, luckily, but uh, just make sure that you know what you're buying. Essentially, the set is made up of, of a bunch of flats a lot of the time. Uh, while there are scenery pieces, uh, the, the main portion of it is, is flats. Flats is short for scenery flat. Uh, so it's a flat piece of scenery, which is usually movable, but not really, uh, that is painted or styled to appear as something else. So this is what a typical flat looks like. Sorry about the, the grainy writing. Uh, and they're used uh, to basically make arches, doors, walls, backdrops, anything like that uh, that you could possibly need for your show can basically be made by, be, uh, by using a flat. Standard Broadway and Hollywood flats, which I'll go into the distinction, are four foot by eight foot, but sizes can vary uh, according to the set. So essentially you need to make sure that uh, if you're using a flat, you know what kind of flat you're using as well as uh, what size you need and for what. Um, we have a ton of flats at Lowell. So if you are ever in the position where you're designing a set or uh, working with a set designer, just make sure that like the flat that you're using is the one that we need um, and they can be painted, stripped, repainted, stripped, made. Like they're, they're super versatile, which is why we love them. Okay, so a Broadway flat, uh, those are the ones we have a lot of. Well, we have a couple Hollywood flats, but most of these are Broadway. Um, framing members are flat, which are these. So essentially it just means that they're like flush with the flush with the, uh, the face. The facing is usually muslin, although sometimes it can be like Luan if you are really, you know, it, it, into it, but uh, really the main, the main difference is the backing and the framing. Uh, Broadway flats use corner blocks and straps to connect set pieces. So if you look at this, uh, that's a corner brace, that's a corner brace, corner block. You're never going to wind up with, um, with corner blocks and, and braces on a, uh, on a Hollywood flat that makes it a Broadway flat. That's kind of the main distinction is the corner blocks. Uh, so Hollywood flats, sometimes it's called TV flats or hard flats. Uh, they have the framing members on the edge. There are no corner blocks. So if you look, uh, it, it, it goes out like that. There's not a, um, there's not like, uh, it's not sticking out a little bit like it is on the Broadway flats. There's no corners. Uh, the facing is usually Luan because it's hard. Uh, it usually has a rectangular frame. If you've ever seen any, uh, like the easiest one to think of is a sitcom filmed in front of a live studio audience the entire background of like the entire wall of their house is made out of, of Hollywood flats every time. Um, we don't have a ton of these, but we do have some of them uh, and they can be used pretty easily. Uh, they're just kind of thicker and, and not as, as useful for theater, but they're way more useful for TV. All right, so set design uh, itself instead of set construction is a completely different process. So let's talk about drafting. Drafting is the process of drawing out all of the uh, material, uh, drawing out the entire set. If you are a set designer, you're going to need to do this a ton of times because uh, you're going to do it the first time. You're going to go, this is great. And then you're going to look at it again, go, oh, wait, the script says it needs to be something entirely different. And then you're going to do it a second time. And then you're probably going to do it a third time to make sure. Then you're going to have another great idea and you're going to do it again. You're, you're going to wind up drafting a lot. Uh, so there are some great drafting materials. Uh, I'm going to make sure that you guys can actually see them. Okay. Um, this is a live demonstration. This is a T-square. Uh, a T-square is a flat ruler that clips onto the edge of a table. So essentially, it has a little, a little hook here. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's not quite flush with it. So you hook that onto the edge of a table, and then that makes it so that it's 100% straight all the time, uh, and you have a straight line to go with. I also have an adjustable triangle. Uh, the adjustable triangle, you just put it onto the T-square. So when you're drafting, you go like that, and that's how you draw uh, vertical lines. 
Cool thing about the adjustable triangle is that it is adjustable, as you could probably guess from the name. Uh, and the adjustable triangle, it basically you can uh, arrange it to be a different angle. So if you're trying to make, uh, let's say, a, uh, uh, like a 45 degree angle, it's already there. But if you're trying to make a 30 degree angle, there you go. So that's a 30, that's a 60, and that's a 90. Uh, you'll always have the 90 degree angle. So at any point, if you need to make a vertical line, you always can. Uh, the last real like drafting tool that you need, you, you can use a ton of templates um, and other stuff, but you can probably guess what those are for. Um, sorry, let me grab it out. Uh, the last thing you're going to need is a scale ruler. Uh, this is something if you, all, all three of these are if you need it for like professional set, uh, set design or if you're doing a real like a real show. Uh, I, you're going to be doing some light drafting for, for the project, but you do not need any of these. Just use a regular ruler. Uh, we're not like grading harshly or and this is not like a structural thing that could you know injure someone if it's actually in place. Uh, but scale rulers are really helpful because you know that this is a foot long uh, in, in real life. But then if you look at the uh, little markings, I'm not sure if you can really see them. Uh, the little markings are showing you the scale, meaning I can make a quarter inch um, to a foot scale on this ruler and know exactly how long it is without having to like divide all the time. So if I use the quarter inch side, I can like just draw out to one as opposed to drawing out to four on a regular ruler and then trying to figure it out uh, to see how many you know feet there are. Uh, so that's basic drafting tools. You, those are super useful um, and we love using them uh, for doing hand drafting. Uh, so here's a floor plan that I did uh, for no exit. Floor plans are great. Uh, floor plans are basically a way that we can see from above where everything's going to be positioned in the set. Uh, the way that I like to do it and the way that I know a lot of other set designers like to do it as well is you draw out um, the dimensions of your theater on a regular paper. So if you look, uh, this is the Steve Silver Theater at Lowell. Uh, where we did no exit, that's the uh, that's the lighting booth, and so this is all audience. That's all audience. Um, those are walls of the theater that cannot be removed, which is why they're uh, shaded in like that. If you have a structural part of the theater that cannot be moved at all, you need to shade it in so we know. Um, that's all backstage area, backstage area. So yeah, that's your that's your floor plan of the theater. Then you put tracing paper, which this is the tracing paper designed for no exit. You put tracing paper on top of it. Um, and then you can draw in what you want. So if any of you saw no exit last year, and I know probably many of you do not because you were not here. Um, there's a door there. I have my benches. I have my hanging cupid. Um, I have my shelves. Like I've added those in over the top on my tracing paper. That way I can then um, like take it away, do it again. I can bring in a new piece of tracing paper and do it an another time. That way I don't have to keep drawing the floor plan of the theater over and over again. And I highly recommend you do the same. Sadly, I don't have access to a picture of my elevation for an exit right now. Um, so we're going to use this elevation. You will never need to do an elevation this detailed at Lowell because um, you're going to be managing construction as well most of the time. Or if you're not, you'll be working with the, per the person who is. Um, so, you know, your elevation should be good, but it does not need to be this. Uh, and that's kind of, that, that's unique to us. Uh, if you ever do any, um, any professional set design, uh, your elevation will need to be basically this detailed in order to make sure that uh, the people who are managing construction know what to do. An elevation is a front facing uh, view of the set. So how the floor plan was above, this is from the front. Um, so essentially, if you're in the audience and you're in the best seat in the house, seventh row center, and you're looking straight into the into the stage, what do you see? Um, this is probably what we're going to be asking you to do for the project, just letting you know. Uh, so elevations are cool because you get to see exactly what the audience sees. Um, so from above, it's kind of more for spatial planning. From the front, it's more for actual design. Uh, so once you've done those, if you have time, which we rarely do at Lowell, but occasionally we, we do, and that's great. You can make a model. Um, I, I have not seen a Lowell model be made. We tried for um, 
uh, into the woods. Miss C was making one, and then we kind of bailed on it because it was already the, we were already almost finished with the set by the time she was making the model, and she was like, "I don't need to do this anymore." Um, but models are really good for showing exactly what your set is going to look like, and in any professional theater context, you're going to need to make a model. Um, the cool thing is now there are like model makers who are part of theater companies occasionally. It's not likely you're ever going to work with a company that has a model maker unless you like go all the way to Broadway. Um, but model makers specialize in doing this from the drawings so that you kind of just give them the spe specific dimensions of the set. Uh, and then you don't need to really uh, do that much. And then the model makers will be able to, to build it for you. Uh, but if you ever build a model, you will need to build it yourself. Um, this is a, I believe this is Kinky Boots. Um, and you just need to make sure that you're like able to build the model um, to accurately represent where you're gonna be. The model has to be in scale, just like the elevation, just like the floor plan. Uh, it is really helpful if they're all on the same scale. The traditional scale for all architectural and theater um, things are going to be uh, in, in quarter inch to a foot scale. Uh, so make sure that you kind of know how to do that pretty quickly. So a, a quarter of an inch is one foot, an inch is four feet. Just be sure you're aware of that, uh, especially when you're doing the project or you're doing a future set design. And that's the final set. So this is the set for no exit that we did. Um, as I showed you, hanging Cupid Bench's door. Um, the shelves are off to the side a little bit and there's some chandeliers hanging. Uh, essentially what this is, is the it's the final product of all of your design. So if you've done the model, you've done the elevation, you've done the floor plan, uh, after all of that, and, you, and that's been communicated to the director, so the director can approve it, you then make the set uh, to make sure that you know kind of like what it looks like. After that, uh, after you're finished building the set and you can build it with other people, you, if you're at a professional level, you can you know, delegate to, to others and then come back when it's, when it's almost done. See the final set, make sure everything's there, make sure everything's good working. If anything is missing, or if you have another good idea, uh, like while when the set's built, like tech week wise, um, it's a little too late if you have like a whole structural object that you want to add in. But if it's like, oh, I needed a chair, great, let's build a chair. Um, the final set stage is kind of just your last stage of design where you where you've seen it all come together, and that's it's really rewarding. Okay. Uh, so for your project, what we're going to wind up doing is assigning you um, the, you have to make an elevation or a floor plan or both if you're feeling up to it of uh, the set that you design for uh, a show of your choosing. So if you just think about all the, like the theater that you've seen, theater that you like, stuff like that. Um, and if you have any show that you're interested in uh, or that you're feeling particularly inspired by, make a set design for it. Just draw out an elevation, draw out a floor plan. Uh, if you're doing a floor plan, I want it to be in exactly quarter inch to a foot scale. Uh, if you're doing an elevation, I'm going to be way more lenient about that. Uh, you can just kind of just do it the way that you want it to. Uh, the thing I will be, you know, like you should do this. Um, elevations have to be in proportion to each other. So for example, if I'm like drawing out a chair, that chair needs to be you know, smaller than like, you know, a ladder. If the chair and the ladder can't be the same unless the chair is like really close to the audience and the ladder is really far away. Just make sure everything on your elevation is proportional to each other. Uh, the, the floor plan does have to be in quarter inch scale. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions about the project? Sorry, I know that was a lot. Uh, so difference in function between Broadway and Hollywood flats. Uh, kind of. Broadway flats are always used in theater. Hollywood flats are always used in TV. Um, Broadway flats are traditionally uh, softer because they have the they have the um, the canvas uh, front. But what you're going to wind up seeing at Lowell is a bunch of Broadway flats with hard surfaces uh, because that's the way we roll. And uh, so essentially, Broadway flats with hard surfaces take the place of Hollywood flats. Uh, they're both used for the same thing, but Hollywood flats are easy to make TV sets out of um, and fill, and work look better on camera, while Broadway flats look better on stage. Mind if I add to that, Brody? Yeah. Uh, so the 
one of the main differences between them is uh, Broadway flats are the way they're built. They're built flat, so the wood is wide, and that is so they can be flown up into the fly system. Hollywood style flats are built wider, so they're a lot more stable. They're easier to just set down on the ground and do that way. You don't need to fly Hollywood flats out. So Hollywood flats are usually heavier and bigger, bigger footprint. So that's another difference. That's why we don't use them much. Yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> uh, does anyone have any other questions? Okay. Um, uh, if you know anyone who wants to participate in the project, or if you uh, have any other questions about the project, please DM us, please email us. We know this is a big one. Um, so you're going to have all over spring break to work on it. Uh, this is going to be presented April 6th. Uh, we're going to hope to do an interview next week, and then it's spring break, and then we'll be back uh, for you to do your, your presentations of the sets. Uh, please DM us or email us what show you want to do. Uh, that way we can just kind of see what, what's going on. Um, and I know that I have a bunch of ideas if you um, if you uh, are, are looking for inspiration uh, and need need some help. Um, again, this is not need to be perfect. Uh, just make sure if you're doing a floor plan, it's in scale. If you're doing an elevation, it's in proportion. Uh, and yeah, be creative. All right, bye. <laughs>